welcome back to another vlog. It is the weekend, it's Saturday morning afternoon, almost afternoon, it's 11.42. We've been running errands all morning because we are hosting a little Father's Day dinner for our dads today. Um, my dad's coming over and Mitch's dad and then some of our siblings are coming over. So we're trying to get the house all cleaned up wanted to get some groceries we're doing like a steak dinner so we ran a few errands to get some steak and we're doing some drinks and all the fun stuff and so we want to get the house a little bit cleaned up today i mitch is outside mowing the lawn and i am about to go clean off the back porch because it's full of pollen and i want to make sure that we can sit out there because it's a really nice day today and then just getting the inside of the house like vacuumed and cleaned up and everything. So, gonna be just a little weekend vlog. I'm gonna go upstairs and change into some clothes that I don't mind getting all dirty and polleny, but I wanted to show you my outfit because I kind of quickly put it together this morning and thought that it was super cute. So I'm gonna show you. All right, sorry, you can hear the lawnmower. We have our windows open, but I threw the sweater over because I didn't know if it was gonna be cold or whatever um this is just a ralph lauren sweater that i thrifted and then this tank is recently thrifted it's from the gap and it's just super comfy and then some joggers that are these green joggers from zara from i don't know a couple years ago i think i got them on black friday when we were in chicago a few years ago but that's the outfit that I just wore to run errands. My hair is a disaster. So I'm going to try and clean up the back porch and do some housework. It tastes more white wine. Yeah, I think I like it better than normal rosés. Mm -hmm. It's not as sweet. Yeah, it's drier. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's Friday. We're heading to go to a really fun brewery in Kent, Ohio. Um, I think it's called Bellhop. I have no idea. Maybe. Let me see, Bell something, it's in an old church. It looks really cool, we've never been there before. We're gonna go meet Mitch's mom and his brother, Bell Tower. Bell Tower. Yep, so, got tons of beer options, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and I think this is the first brewery I've ever seen a bunch of options of non-alcoholic beer served, hmm. which is interesting. A bunch of cocktails, non-alcoholic cocktails, and a little wine menu so we're gonna go check it out and see how it is do they have mocktails yep isn't that what a non-alcoholic cocktail is yeah mocktail? i didn't hear you say that oh yeah yeah they do it's kind of annoying i wish that more breweries had gluten-free they're all like going to non-alcoholic now yeah also yeah i don't know it's weird it's because the people that are gluten-free don't actually have to be gluten-free so they don't drink gluten-free beer yeah they that's, just that's exactly what they just drink regular beer yeah that is true
All right, we're back in the car. We're on our way home from Bell Tower. If you have never been or in the Cleveland area, highly recommend checking it out. It is like one of my top favorite breweries now. Best fries I think I've ever had anywhere. Yeah. Which is weird, not beer, fries. Well, the beer, I thought that I was going to get a cocktail. They actually ended up having gluten reduced beer and I got to get beer, which was a game changer. So exciting, yeah. Because we used to have to drive to Athens, which is like four hours away, Athens, Ohio, if we wanted to, if I wanted to get gluten free gluten reduced beer from a brewery. So yeah, and the place is so cool. I took some video and maybe I'll overlay the bit I'll overlay this clip or I'll post it before this, but it's an old church and so it was just the decor they did a really good job with everything so if you're in the area or you're passing through or whatever highly recommend checking it out but we're almost home we started watching marvelous mrs Maisel again because we just finished it and we couldn't remember what happened in the beginning of the series and so we decided we're going to watch it again so we started episode one. Maybe we'll do that again tonight. Sounds like a plan to me. So two. <laughs> or three and two and three. Yeah, I'm feeling a veg. I mean, it's Friday. Friday is like we never do anything on Friday, normally ever, because it's just it's veg night. Like we just are turn our brains off and do nothing but lay on the couch. Sounds good to me. Yeah, go get lady. Take her on a walk. I hate taking her to walk. Oh, it's raining. No one will be out. Or yeah. it rained. That's no why I hate taking her to walk. It's wet. And oh. she pulls everywhere. She'll be good. She won't. She'll be good, lady. She'll be bad. She'll be happy to see you, mom and dad. Well, yeah, she's of course happy, but she's bad. <laughs> Obviously, she's bad. It's now Saturday. I don't think I've vlogged at all today, but we woke up. We went over to my dad's to see my sister because she was over there and she told us about this bookstore. It's a Goodwill bookstore and it's a Goodwill that's only books. Like when you walk in, it kind of looks like a library and all the books are super, super cheap. So they just recently opened one over on the west side of Cleveland in Westlake. So we checked that one out and we got so many books I figured I would do a book haul. But if you have if you are into books and reading and stuff, I'd recommend Googling like Goodwill bookstore and seeing if they have one near you because the prices for the books were insane. I'll share a couple of the prices, but they were basically between like three and four bucks for all of these books. So you gonna help me? You want to see? Two of the more fun books that weren't aren't necessarily reading books we got are two bar books. So this is called New American Bartender's Handbook and Dave Broom is the author. And it just, we love cocktail books and bar books and so I thought that this one has a lot of actual writing in it for learning. So I figured I could actually read this one and I'm excited to dive in. So this was $4.77. And then this other one is called Shots Food and Drink. I don't know how to pronounce this. Huh? I don't know how to pronounce this. What's the word? M-I-S-C-E-L-L-A-N-Y. I don't know. Molishany? Anyway, another bar book and a lot. It's not pictures or anything. You, It's a lot of text, so just more learning. If you didn't watch one of my previous episodes, I talked about our company, Social Drinkers, where we have a newsletter called Shots and we send out information about the alcohol industry, like the art, the science, and the industry behind alcohol and the beverage space. So. I like to do a lot of learning and I wanted to pick a couple books up to read. 
Then we found a lot of good biographies too. We really like biographies and we wanted to find books that were evergreen, that we would read over and over again, that we can learn from, not just books that are kind of like one and done. And one of them is the Jim Gaffigan biography called <laughs> Dad is Fat. We love Jim Gaffigan, we think he's hilarious and so we're both excited to read this book. This one is Titan, um, the life of John D. Rockefeller. So again, just another really good biography that you can read and learn from over and over again. Is this Bill Gates book a biography? Who wrote it? No. How Microsoft moguls, how Microsoft's mogul reinvented industry and made himself the richest man in America. So just another story about Bill Gates life lots of biographies I know, a lot of good ones. oh I forgot about the Bruce Springsteen yeah, I'm excited about that one. Bruce Springsteen biography born to run what's this Napoleon book this is a book about Napoleon I just finished a book about King Gates Khan so I want to read about another great conqueror all right Napoleon another biography ish book Elon Musk, another biography. Abe, which is all about Abe Lincoln. I'm really excited to read this. We le we just recently did a trip to Washington DC and learned a lot about history and presidents and stuff. And I feel like this one's going to be really interesting just coming off that trip and learning more about America's history than I've known before. And then, Steve Jobs. I'm really pumped about that one. Have you read it? Yeah. Is this what? I needed to pause for a second because that was loud. I'm I'm almost done. This is called Let My People Go Surfing. It's written by the founder of Patagonia, right? The founder wrote it. Yeah, he's not sure. Um, and I have wanted to read this book. Ever since I listened to a podcast on the Skinny Confidential of the founder of June Shine, and he talked about this book, so I'm very excited to read this one. And then just some more business books, if you're into business books. Um, Who Moved My Cheese? My dad said that this is a really good leadership book. We were there with my dad, so um, like a management book. Built to Last, this is Stanford did a study um, of a bunch of different companies and picked out what about those companies made them built to last. So trying to build companies and want them to last. So I feel like that'll be good. And then good to great. Oh wait, that's so funny. Wait, did we know this? Good to great. Yeah, both of those. Well, oh, did you know that? Yeah. Did you pick up good to great? I did. Oh, what's this about? Uh, the habit, like, kind of the procedures you can put in place to take a company from doing okay to surpassing the numbers and how it's more simple than most people think it is. Yeah, cool. Well, I didn't even realize that, so that's fun. And then Tools of Titans, Tim Ferriss. Broke. I'm, I'm most excited about that one. This is almost kind of like a textbook. So he interviewed a bunch of titans of the industry so for example i just opened this one reed hoffman and he they gave each of them kind of gave an excerpt of what made them successful and what habits that they put in place um, for success so like this next one was peter Thiel. so i feel like this will be just a good one to have and then i ended up finding a coffee table book just a cool one of chicago it has a black spine and i figured it would look really cool sitting like this just stacked with some other books and it's literally just a picture, a photography book of cool pictures of Chicago. So for $4 for a coffee book, I could not pass that up. So yeah, that's, that's dare I say it, but that was a lot. And all of this was $77. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 books for $77 is kind of insane. So yeah, if you have a Goodwill, 
bookstore by your house highly suggest all of these books are in like really good condition too so if you like to read enjoy reading um highly recommend going to goodwill bookstore if you have one it's now sunday i didn't really vlog yesterday we woke up this morning we ran some errands went to lowe's got groceries and now it's like 11ish. Mitch just mowed the lawn. I've been prepping our room because we are going to paint. I ignore the mess. I have to do laundry and washer bedding and stuff. So I didn't even make the bed this morning. But as you can see, we have this lovely brown trim everywhere. So we are going to be painting this trim white as we did downstairs in the dining room. So. Just continuing that, we want to do the bedroom because there's a lot in the bedroom and we want to have a nice master bedroom. So we're prioritizing this and trying to get this done today. So I just wanted to do a little bit of a before and then we'll see what it looks like after. Are you all right? They asked me, sitting with a glass of whiskey, eyes glazed 